So I'm going to move into some examples of our core concepts with diagrams and film here. My favorite concept, uh, oh sorry, before I hop into that, just so you guys uh, see the way that I draw things up and so our language is on the same place. Um, when I say a spray release, that just means a three yard by three yard outside release. When I say a stem, that for me means a three by three inside release. And a man MOR, that's a mandatory outside release, so if they have a defender over top of them, they have to release outside of the defender. If that defender, for instance, is a corner and they're playing hold and that corner's 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, I understand you're not gonna get necessarily outside of them, so we just convert that to a sprint. Um, purple, for me, when I draw up a route with purple, that indicates a pre-snap read. So this is typically screens, uh, pre-snap matchups like fades and hooks. So that's a decision that our quarterback looks. He says, okay, you know what? That defender's three yards off of my guy running a fade. As soon as I get this ball, it's out of my hand. I'm letting my guy try and make the play. Same thing with, with screens. We look in the empty. We see, hey, you know, that will didn't bump out. I'm throwing the ball this way. I don't even need to think about it. Green is typically, uh, this is the primary post snap read. It's usually a two wide receiver combo that creates a high, low, or horizontal stressor, stressor sorry. Um, orange indicates our secondary read. This is the final read before I ask my quarterback to tuck the ball. If you go to this and it's not there, we got to get going. Um, red, uh, I don't think I have any red routes here, but those are typically like if I have something like, you know, there's a blitz coming, this will be your guy that we got to hit. Uh, but I think of the diagrams today, I don't have any of those. So yes, my favorite concept, I run this in a multitude of ways. Like I said, I had a meeting with Coach Bartolacci last night. I showed him, I think, eight different ways that I run this concept. Um, the basis for me is uh, this is stick. So I'll talk through the read a little bit here. I'll talk through what I teach my quarterbacks to do, what I want my wide receivers to do. I have some film examples of it going right and going wrong, uh, particularly when guys don't MOR, what can happen. Um, so I'll start over here. So the, as, the, as I said before, purple indicates a pre-snap read for our quarterbacks. Um, number one, I put my two best receivers at these inside positions right here, okay? Um, most of the time, defenses are gonna play their corner out here, their half on this guy, corner here, half on this guy. So that means if a defense doesn't adjust to us, they're bumping linebackers out onto our best wide receivers. Happen every single game of the season, <coughs> no adjustment. So I start to try and take advantage of that, right? We have a very fast, very athletic guy here on linebackers, love and respect to them. They shouldn't be covering alpha wide receivers. So we set this up, the stick. First off, has to be a stem release, okay? We wanna create as much space from the outside of this concept as possible. It puts them on just that much more of an island it also shortens the throw for your quarterback a little bit. Now, for us, if, number one, there's no bump, <coughs> our pre-snap is that he's just gonna hook it. And we hook it to the outside because if that linebacker tries to bait us into it, an outside break gives us just a little bit of extra wiggle room so that our quarterback can put it low and outside so that linebacker shooting out from right here can't get to the ball. If we stem and then hook that inside, Linebacker could make a play on the ball or hit our guy pretty hard. This allows our guy that even if he just catches it and rolls onto the ground, five, six yards, great, the drive continues, and our guy doesn't have to take a bad hit. So that's our pre-snap, and that's why I call it an alert. So if we ever have the hook, we take the hook every time. And that's the end of the, end of the day, right? Our quarterback knows that's where the ball is going. All this stuff can go on, doesn't matter. He's just whipping a hook at a guy, and we're taking our five or six yards. And it doesn't matter if it's second and 18, that's what we're doing, okay? If that's not the case, if this defender is bumped out on both of our guys and he's playing tight enough that we don't feel confident in taking that, our quarterback knows that this is no longer the primary read, it's actually our final read, and we're gonna move out here. And we just have a very, very standard high-low. So we have what I teach as a flat, which is just getting outside as fast as possible. So what we wanna do with this <coughs> Number one is create more space for this guy right here. The sooner that you cut out and, and show the defense what you're doing, 
the sooner that the flats defender is going to just cut and break and get outside on that, which is fine. Um, sometimes in, you know, cold circumstances, this half is a little slow to jump on it, and that's our primary read. If he's slow to jump on it, we take it. That's fine. You'll see lots of examples of that, too. Um, our second read, we move up to our, our fade. This is an MOR, so he's, while this guy is, while this flat is open and, and developing and we're reading whether we should throw it or not, this guy is releasing outside. Okay, if the quarterback sees that there's no defender over top, he's just putting the ball up to him. If somebody's already bailed there, we know it's not there, and we're moving on to our third, which is just an outbreaking route. We've created the space for it, right? We've held our, our flats defender here. We've held our deep third outside defender here. And now we're just hoping that our best athlete who we've put here is just breaking to the, to the sideline faster than the linebacker can catch up to him. What this concept also does for us is if the coverage is so tight that our quarterback has to tuck this, we've taken six defenders to the sideline. So it's this is probably something that I'll call 40 or 50% of the game. It's, and my kids can get a little annoyed with it, but it's just, it's it offers a solution to everything the defense can throw at you. They don't want to bump somebody, we get a free six yards. If they do want to bump somebody, it's a very clean one, two, three read. And if they have six guys that are better than our six guys, well, our quarterback's in a five on five, or a six on five in the middle. And we'll take that, That's that we're okay with that. So how does stick create advantage? Our quick hook option from our inside slots forces defense to play their number threes outside of the box and in tight coverage on our most dangerous athletes. Outbreaking routes pull defenders away from the box, creating space for yards after catch and QB running late. Uh, making defenders redundant. Safeties play to depth and position uh, too far to make an impact on any routes we run in this concept. Have your quarterback spot the safety pre-snap and throw to the opposite side of the formation to further increase their ineffectiveness. Be efficient. Hook and speed out both break around our drive zone. Even if we are tackled immediately, we meet our efficiency benchmark. Many times these plays go for considerable distances when your playmakers break the first tackle. Defense is playing us in a 30 front. They have one, two, it looks like they are keeping this guy within the confines of the box, meaning that this defender, or uh, this offensive player, who is one of our best, probably our best, I would say, Aries Ferry. Uh, what was he, offensive MVP, or was he anything at all? Mm -hmm. Special teams MVP. Special teams MVP. Ah, he caught a lot of touchdowns. Anyways. The defenders are playing seven or eight yards right off the line of scrimmage, even with our American static stance, this is how much respect they give our guys, right? So before the snap, our quarterback and him are on the same page. We know we're taking the hook all day long. No thought process there other than that. And that's fine for us. That's a fine play for us. Any rushing play, any passing play that nets you half of your half the distance to a first down, totally, totally acceptable for us. So, uh, yeah, in this clip we see there's enough space. Perfect. So here's another hook option. Okay. So uh, to the bottom of the screen, what's the first thing that we're seeing here? Number one, I guess, I'm predicting this is hold. We got a low half, high corner. The biggest thing for us though, this is our best athlete. There's nobody over top of him. Now some teams, you know, you might get a little bit of greedy. You want to pull for the seam. Just take the hook and put the ball in his hand, make it an extended handoff. Take the five or six yards and let him work with it. So there was a late adjustment there, but at that point in time, our quarterback and our wide receiver had already made the decision. There is no, there is no post snap adjustments when that decision is made. We are on the same page, and we are sticking with that uh, plan of attack. Because when there's any uncertainty between the wide receiver and the quarterback, that's what leads to interceptions, mistakes, incompletions. 
even with the late thing, even if he secured the tackle, still five or six yards, we're fine with that. But like I said, we're just putting it in our best guy's hands. And in this case, he broke a tackle and he made a big play for us. One questions now or at the end? Whenever, yeah. Okay. I have I have a couple questions about this. Of course. So first one, just from a practical standpoint, like if you're talking that they're on the same page, is there a communication call that I mean you don't have to tell us what it is, but nope. is there a call that exists between the quarterback and that um, you know, S to say hook it or, or drive it out? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, sometimes it can be as simple, like if you're worried about like teams stealing it, like sometimes it can just be like a nod, a, you know, like a, a regular hand clap, foot in the ground, whatever it is. They, our guys did have like a way of signaling to each other so that they were both very clearly on the same standpoint. Uh, whatever you want to do, whatever makes sense. I know some people incorporate it into their cadence. We use just a clap cadence so we don't have any way of like talking to each other. So we just do, we do it with a helmet tap. Okay. And then they're just on the same page. And so I guess I was going to say, how do you guys drill that? Do you have on the fly rate? But you wouldn't because you're going to say it beforehand, and that's the first call that's made. That's what you stick with. That's it, yeah. So if, if once we make that call, it's locked and loaded. If the quarterback has to ground the ball, he's grounding it like low and outside. So it's, we already have our guy pulling to the flats as fast as possible, our mandatory outside release. There should be no defenders there at all, especially with the stem. So if our quarterback needs to get it away, it's okay. You can skip it. There's a ton of grass there to just get the ball out of your hands safely. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Um, so here we go. So here's a situation where uh, between our, our quarterback and our wide receivers, they've deemed it that they don't want to throw the hook. Um, there, there's just a lot of noise going on in this area. They're kind of scared. Uh, to do it, and that's fine. If if they if they don't want to throw the hook, I don't force them. Uh, so they've made a decision now that we're we're not going to go that route. So we're going to work to our first uh, actual read of the concept. That isn't a free snap one. So this is uh, just some pictures of our speed out. <laughs> Space that we create at the top of the screen. Uh, this was one of our wide receivers. He really under, he did a good job of understanding this concept. The unfortunate part of this is that most defenses we see do play cover three, and cover three is going to take the fade away like almost every time. So that guy is like running, I think, what Coach Dave calls like a, a love of the game route. You just <laughs> you truly have you're just out there like you're basically a, a really fast old lineman. You're just taking one guy. <laughs> out of the game. Uh, it is unfortunate, We lo I'd love to hit it more, but that's just not the reality of the situation. So what he does is he has a high corner, he takes him high and outside, he makes him flip his hips so that he can't see that flat route and try and make a play on it. Um, yeah. You see he's attacking that outside shoulder and bringing him with him, that opens up the space for our flat. And then we'll see an example where our teammate does not love the game. This is Mr. Aries Perry wanting to catch a fade route himself. Uh, it's not going to get the ball very often. Uh, he decides to not run an MOR, and you'll see that. So it'll be the hips of this of this corner. See, Aries should be attacking the outside hips, forcing him to turn his back to the play. What he does is he just runs a seam ball so five can keep his eyes on our on our quarterback and on our flat defender and play them both. And we do complete the football. It should have been a better play. You see how he can stay and he sits and he comes off. So that's what happens when you have players that don't sort of buy into the system. I, it sucks. It sucks running fades over and over and over again, especially when I call sticks as much as I do. They try to help each other out by switching with each other every now and then. That's what Aries is doing out there. But again, you've got to do the MOR on this concept or it's bust. Uh, so that's one of the most important things that I stress over and over again. Uh, it's still like a decent play. We got four or five yards out of it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not particularly mad. But if five is not there to make that tackle, it should be a 10 or 12 yard play, which is awesome. 
So uh, does anybody have any con uh, questions about that? I didn't put any film of us throwing the fade. It's a fade. We've seen them before. Uh, we, did, we threw maybe one all year. Uh, it's just not there that often. And when it is, it's usually busted coverage. All good? Perfect. During your Central Kings game, you, uh, you were struggling a bit on offense. Yes. To get going. Absolutely. And it almost seemed like you changed game plan to pick on a player rather than a you pick on their half. Yeah. So I'm going to actually have film this. Central Kings absolutely shut down. We have a quad screen that we love to run that we overwhelm teams with. They were prepared for it. Yeah. And I started sweating in the first half because I didn't really know what to do. Uh, we had to, and what our game adjustment was, was they're taking, they genuinely took away our wide receivers. So I had to tell my quarterback, I said, so you're gonna take some shots this game, you gotta tuck the ball. Like that's what they're telling us we have to do. They genuinely, CK shut down our, our wide receivers. They made the decision. The best part of this system though, is that even if you choose to make that, you still have the ability to attack the box. Okay. I, as an offensive coordinator, didn't have the right blocking schemes in there, so it looks very messy. It is messy. It was messy. Working on this that off uh, this off season, uh, but yeah. So, a better offensive coordinator than me would have a, a draw blocking scheme put in there. We were running inside zone uh, as a draw. You can see when you figured it out, though. Like you, you could, watching the game. Yeah. You could, you could tell the weak half. Yeah, that's we go, we try to go after the go wounded. after yeah. find find the player rather than the scheme. No, yeah. Think it's, yeah, no, they 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 came to play. That, that as Coach Dion said, that was they gave us that. Oh yeah, they they, they, they took us to the final seconds of that game. They yeah. they had an outstanding uh, preparation. And unfortunately, like it just came down to caveman tactics where we just I had to just run my quarterback because that's what they were giving us. <laughs> And they had our playbook help, and so you can tell they were prepared. Yeah. They, oh yeah. yeah, no, they were. Yeah, they definitely were. <laughs> yeah, they had our playbook. Um, okay, so I'm moving on to uh, our pop and zip concepts. So these are just like quick, easy screens for us, which we tag onto our quarterback draws. Again, we just block draws inside zone. I won't be doing that again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as you can tell, I was a, I was a quarterback going all the way up, so uh, O line's a little foreign to me still. So the outside stuff is sound, uh, but yeah, we're working on the inside a little bit. So uh, pop and zip. These are two of our, our favorite screen concepts. Again, this is 30% of the play calls I made against Bayview in the provincial final. Um, it's exceedingly simple. This is this is perfect for when you have a quarterback that can't throw the ball even past the line of scrimmage. Uh, this is, these are your plays. Um, so it's as simple as, uh, you, uh, we just went three by three. There's many ways to run empty and I'll show you a bunch of formations that I think would be great to take home and add to your uh, pockets. Uh, but we just ran three by three, found it easy, did good blocking. Um, so pop, the reason we call it pop, bubbles, right? Uh, it's just bubbles from our interior guys. Our secondary receivers can block the two or the three, whichever is the most dangerous. If they're playing cut and this two is way back here, he's gonna take the three so that our guy can just get to that drive zone that we're trying to hit. Um, same thing for zip. Zip is just hitting the outside receivers. It's the same sort of concept. It's just a straight line. If this one is playing off enough, you just throw to that side. The three honestly never really affects this play. Um, they're very quick screens. Our quarterback knows where the ball is going before. If the defense comes out and you have six defenders across the line of scrimmage pressing all of your guys, tuck it and run. So the decision's made before the snap, right? It's, it's, there's, uh, there's no mental processing after the ball is snapped other than just like where am I running uh, or, you know, my mechanics. So that we found uh, helped our, our backup a lot. So how do pop and zip create advantage, create conflicts? Our screens force defenses to play three defenders close to the line of scrimmage on both sides of the formation. When and if they do that, it creates an open gap in the box uh, if they choose to keep a safety. Again, if I ever see us, uh, if I ever see them play all six close to the line of scrimmage and they walk a safety down to take away all three zones of the field, next play I'm calling for it's 100%. You can, 
get it out of me. It, we ran it twice against Bayview in the provincial final because they did that very same thing. They walked all six guys down to the line of scrimmage. They put six guys in the box. They said, throw it over our heads. We said, okay. Um, and that's, you know, that's, like I said, it doesn't have to be uh, a crazy thing. You just have two slot seams. That's it. That's all you need. And then they have to play safety. Call it once or twice a game. They have to respect it. Even if you don't have a great arm, just throw it down the field and they know it, it can come. Uh, so make a defender who's done it. Again, safety's played a depth of position too far to make an impact on the screens. Or if the quarterback tucks the ball, uh, our efficiency goals, screens are very easily completable balls. They typically net our efficiency goals very easily at high upside again if just one tackle is broken. <coughs> So here's an example of the pop. Uh, I'm not sure where our quarterback throws this, but from his perspective, I'd be fine taking either side of the field. It, it looks, I, Citadel played a too high look against us for most of the game, meaning that most of the time, both of our number three wide receivers were open. So this is kind of a dealer's choice, personally, as a quarterback and a quarterback coach. I would prefer throw it to the boundary just because it's a shorter throw. You can get it there faster. Less if if there is a massive fumbling of the ball or anything goes terribly wrong, you doink it off a helmet into this, the other team's hand. At least you can try and make a tackle as a quarterback over there. So my preference is always go to boundary. But um, Jake and Aries are really good friends, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the ball goes. not terrific blocking but because of our uh, static sort of stance our guys get to their positioning at least and like they're putting their body in the way at the very least um, which uh, as we can see one of our receivers basically falls into a defender uh, by accident but that gives us an extra two or three yards and we get to our efficiency goal <laughs> that makes the initial hit on this is a safety that started at 15 yards depth and he doesn't make that initial contact until we already have five or six yards right 